All right, do you guys ever wonder why you're watching this channel and think to yourself, why does this guy just keep burying himself in shit? Why does he keep just hoarding stuff and having piles of junk everywhere? And I often ask myself that question many, many times. But once in a while, I pick up a few things that can really help my cause here and the things I want to do. What you are looking at right here, this is a cyclonetic burner. It's uh, made by Webster. It's a big oil burner that we took off of. Uh, and it's actually not even really that big compared to some of them. But anyway, took this off of a uh, hot water boiler here a few weeks ago. I've got the twin burner. I've got two of them. Now, we can't do any more foraging in this building now without some kind of an exhaust system. That's not what this video is about. We're actually going to be finishing up the, the draw knife there so we can send it out to Mr. Sparks and get it out of here. But anyway, what we're doing, the plan here is, this is the control box. This is going to be gone. We're going to take that off of here. This bracket's going to be gone. There's an oil pump on this side over here. That's going to be gone. We have oil solenoid valves right here. And yes, I have a plan for these things. You can never have too many solenoid valves. Now this is a 115 volt fan motor. It still works. Everything still operates. This is a very common motor. It's very easy to find. I happen to have a spare if I need it. But I'm sure we'll find some other more creative uses for that one as we go. Now what makes this so nice for me for what I want to do here? It already has a flange here. This is perfect for mounting it to the wall to exhaust out of the building. I have a piece right there. I can get a piece of stove pipe in so we can point it down, maybe angle it out from the building a little bit. We'll probably use something like spiral or something like that. It's going to hold up a little bit better. On this side, when the oil pump comes off, we can... There is a damper under here attached to a rod. I can pull that damper out of here and we can open this thing right up. This right here will be able to attach directly right to the side of an exhaust hood which we're going to be building that soon because I have a lot of forging to do but like I said can't do it until now that we have this wall kind of worked around here. I can't do any until I have a way to exhaust the fumes and really it's long past due. Now the second one of these I'm debating on what to do. I don't know if it's going to be It'll be strong enough to take the coal smoke out of here, especially a small hood right over top of that forge. But I don't think it's going to be quite big enough for a welding hood, which we're going to be doing down the barn a little bit farther. But I happen to have a industrial commercial exhaust fan that's about this big around. And it happens to be 115 volt single phase. Beautiful. Belt driven. Has, uh, I have to replace a bearing in it, which we will be taking you guys along for that. So. Anyway, that's the plan with this. Now, if you guys have been wondering where I have been for the last week, I had my first week back on call after my accident. I haven't been on call in just over a year, and I ended up with 79 hours. I, I think I worked all day Sunday for Uncle Sam, which is just no fun. But anyway, stay tuned. We're going to get to the draw knife now, and I'll catch you guys on the other side of it. Now here's my go-to method for sharpening draw knives and it's pretty, it's kind of an intuitive method but I just get my, I get my oil stone wedged in a couple pieces of wood, put it in the vise and then, real simple, once I have the bevel established where I want it to be, I just kind of hold it where it's going to live. And then we work it up and down the stone in a circular motion because that removes material the fastest. Now you could use jigs, nothing wrong with using jigs if that's what you're into. But I like to freehand a lot because I think it just gives you a better feel for what you're doing. Now granted, jigs and all that, they really give you a superior sharpen. But if you can uh, get good at this, you'll never have to worry about searching for them or any of that. Right now we're using the coarse side of the stone. This is a 600 or maybe it's a four, might be a 400 grit side of the stone. But uh, we just work it. 
and you try to get your bevel nice and even all the way down. We're already starting to get a little bit of an edge there, but I want to get this line nice and even all the way across. So you just keep working with it. Now keep in mind we're working all we're working this entire stone. If you just sit there and work one spot continuously with that stone, you're going to wear it unevenly and you're going to get a stone that's kind of dished out and uh, going to develop a bit of a belly and then you got to dress the stone, which isn't a big deal, but you have to eventually with stones like this. And if you have this thing kind of almost chest high, it's perfect. You can feel everything just right. It's kind of a comfortable spot for me to, to work in. Now that edge, you can see all the circular marks from where we've been doing that. That gives you a really good idea where you're hitting, where your high spots, your low spots are. You can see that really nicely in this, right here on these corners. I've got to take them down some more. We're already almost to the edge of this thing, which is good. And I'm pretty generous with the oil on this stone. This is what keeps it from clogging up on you. Now, and I can start to feel an edge, a nice edge develop, pulling my finger to the back of it. So I know I'm starting to get kind of right on the right track. Obviously, the side where my burr is starting to develop is going to feel a little bit sharper. see how we did. Just be for the fun of it. Let's see if I can get you in the camera without... Eh, I don't think that's too bad. Alright, so here's the... Now this is black cherry. It's not the easiest stuff to shave down in the world. Move my hand a little bit here. But if you could take fine shavings off, and this stuff's good and dry too, it's not too bad. So that's the part that's supposed to bite in. We'll try the part that's not. And keep in mind this stuff's good and dry. Try to cross some end grains here. Not too bad. Shaving horse would be a lot nicer for this, but I'd say this will work. Now, if I can do this without tipping the bench over, let's see if we can take some deep bites. Yep. So that's not too bad. So this is black cherry. The grain has some run out, which makes it a little bit harder to work, and it's good and dry. All we have left to do on this, I'll sand these down by hand, put a coat and a something on them, and then we're going to ship this thing out. But I have the bevel where I like it. It's nice and sharp. This is, uh, so he's going to be peeling some smaller logs with this. So I put this bevel at about 35 degrees. It's a little steeper than uh, most of them you're looking at 29 degrees, somewhere abouts in there. But um, it's still got a pretty good bevel on it. It still can do some fine work, as you can see. But you kind of have to sharpen tools according to their purpose. Now, you can use jigs. You can use uh, 
something like this right here works quite well for the uh, for something like this. There's a rod that goes in the end of it. A lot of you guys probably seen these. These are like a $30 kit and they work quite well. I prefer something like this. I prefer to do like what you guys saw on the bench vise there. Get your stone set up in between some uh, some boards so you don't break your stone because you can crush it pretty easily in that vise. Get a good layer of oil or soak it in water, whatever kind of stone you're using. And then just sharpen it as if you were using it, you know. You, you go in a round motion so that it, uh, it removes material a lot quicker. And then you polish it up by going one direction. And uh, you'll get something that looks like that. But I'm actually a lot happier with this now that I used it. The handles are comfortable in the hand. You can index it quite easily. It, it holds. Now that, that was kind of a poor poor spot to try it out because that bench is just kind of standing there. It's screwed into the post, but nothing on that end where the vise is. That's more just for holding stuff while I'm running the torch, things like that. But um, yeah, shit, this will work. But anyway, we should be getting back to more content this coming week. Hopefully we can get a lot more videos out. I have a, a video I'm working on for the company right now. I'm also going to throw it up on this channel and that'll be a, that should be a really good one. I think you guys will enjoy that. But anyway, thanks for watching everybody. Catch you on the next one.